Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss about atomic pointers or the atomic form of the pointer. But keep in mind, it does not mean that pointed object is an atomic object, but pointer itself is atomic. So the operation on this pointer will be atomic operations. But the operation on the object may or may not be atomic one depending on the implementation. Now as with the all atomic type Atomic pointer also neither copy constructible nor copy assignable. But of course, it can be constructed and assigned non atomic pointers. So, as we already discussed, these are the set of functions can be applied to atomic pointers. Let me quickly show you an example to demonstrate how to apply each of these functions with the atomic pointers. So, in this example, first I have created the integer array with 20 values and I have assigned the values for each of those element. Now keep in mind our array are zero index base which means the first element in the array has the zeroth index and of course array name itself is pointed to the first element in the array. Here I have created atomic integer type pointer called x pointer and assigned pointed to the beginning of the array. And then I have query that x pointer to check whether it is lock free or not using is lock free function. And then I have created another normal pointer called y pointer and point it to the fourth element in the array. And then I have called store operation on the x pointer to store the y pointer to the x pointer. And then of course I have printed out the current value of the x pointer by calling x pointer dot load. Now this x pointer dot load will load the pointer. So we have to use star operator to get the value out of that pointer. And then I have called the compare exchange weak function on that x pointer. Now here our atomic x pointer and the normal y pointer both will point it to the same object. Therefore this compare exchange function will be successful and the x pointer will be updated to point to the desired value or in this case 11th element in the array. And then I have printed out whether the compact shade weak function is successful or not. And then of course I have printed out the value of that current x pointer. And here also I have used star operator to get the value of the atomic pointer. So as with the normal pointer, we can get out the value of the atomic pointer using star operator in this way. So let me run this example and see the outcomes are expected ones. So here you can see that the is lock free function is returned true which means the atomic integer pointer is implemented in a lock free manner internally. And then I have printed out the value after I point it to the y pointer which in that case pointed to the fourth element that's why it printed out 4. And then it printed out the store operation is successful and after compare exchange operation it will print out the value 11 because currently it's pointed to the 11th element. So that is how we can call some of these functions on atomic pointers. But in this video, my main focus is to show you new operations we can do other than this common one. There are new functions we can call upon atomic pointers, which are fetch add, fetch sub, increment and decrement. Now let's see how we can call each of these functions on atomic pointer. In this example also, I have first created the integer array with 20 elements and then I have assigned values for the each of those elements. And then I have created atomic integer pointer and assigned it to pointer to the first element in the array. And after this initial step, I have printed out the value of the x pointer using star operator in front of the pointer. And then I have called fetch add function on our atomic integer pointer. Now this fetch add function will add the given offset to the pointer and return the previous pointer. So after this fetch add function, I have printed out the previous value that pointed by the x pointer and the current value pointed by the x pointer as well. The fetch sub function will decrement the given offset from the atomic pointer and it will also return the previous pointer. So after this fetch sub function also, I have printed out the previous value pointed by the x pointer and the current value pointed by the x pointer as well. And then I have called post increment and the 
force decrement operators on the our atomic integer pointer. Now keep in mind the post increment and post decrement and also the pre increment and the pre decrement operators work for the atomic operator same as they work for the normal pointers. So let me run this example and see what is the outcome. So as you can see from this output, after initialization, our x pointer pointed to the element which has the value 1 because our x pointer currently pointed to the first element in the array. And after fetch sub, you can see the previous value is value 1 because previously x pointer has pointed to the first element. Now after adding 12 as the offset, we can see that now currently x pointer pointed to the 13th element of the array. And for the fetch sub function, the previous value be printed out as 13 because our fetch add function made that to pointed to the 13th element. And after fetch sub function, our current pointer pointed to the object which has the value 10 because we have given a 3 as an offset for our fetch sub function. And from the large 2 output, you can see that this post increment and post decrement operators has worked same as they work for the normal pointers. So that's it for this video. Thank you.